more value for your business. Sign on to Vodafone 2 Much Business, a cost-efficient mobile offer that allows you to choose and customize how much data, voice or SMS allocations your business needs. Send stats to 050-777-9000 or email vodafonebusiness.gh at vodafone.com. Whatever your business needs are, Vodafone 2 Much Business has a solution for you. Back to the show. So my guest is a man who used to sit on this side, David Ampapu, for many years, was Ghana's favorite interviewer, doing some fantastic interviews on television. These days, you are the CEO of the Petroleum Chamber. Is this the kind of job I should be looking forward to doing in 10 years? Well, who's to say? I mean, you know, <laughs> who's to say what tomorrow brings? You have to understand that you must be uh, ready for all kinds of things. Sometimes they say luck comes to those who wait. I mm. say no. Mm. Luck comes to those who who are preparing. Amazing. So, there are a lot of things in your life. We'll talk about that later. But this chamber, what does it do? What is the chamber about? The chamber is the advocacy group for the upstream petroleum industry. When I say okay. upstream petroleum, I'm talking about that sector of the petroleum bit, which is mm. in, involved in exploration and production. And it's happening upstream. It's meaning that we are thousands of feet beneath the seabed drilling for oil and gas. Mm -hmm. That's the upstream sector. You know, there's the midstream, which is where you are transporting and so mm -hmm. on. And there's downstream, which we are familiar with, where you are buying petrol and diesel. You mm -hmm. trade. We've always had the downstream sector. So it's easy for people to understand it. Upstream yeah. began when we discovered oil in 2007 and began production in 2010. That is the upstream sector. Mm -hmm. So the companies in that sector have formed an association. Mm -hmm. I represent them as an advocate and I am involved in stakeholder engagement and trying to get the message mm. of industry out. Yeah. We are there for industry. Mm. So that's essentially what we, the companies are made up of, you know, some of the big international oil companies, international service companies, and local companies. I want to stress that the 22 companies in the chamber, mm. 13 or 14 of them are Ghanaian companies. Wow. Okay, so that's, Fully Ghanaian? Yes, absolutely. Or fronting Ghanaian? No, these are the Ghanaian companies. <laughs> these are serious that. Ghanaian companies. It's funny yes. because typically you would have... Service companies, be careful, remember. In that. addition to production. Yeah. Typically you would have upstream flowing downstream. But Ghana is a bit inverted yeah. because we discovered oil rather belatedly. Yeah. So yeah. you have the downstream pretty well developed, yeah. We see the filling stations, yeah, yeah, and upstream is rather yeah, new. Yeah. How does that complicate your advocacy work? It doesn't complicate it at all because it all starts upstream. I always yeah. keep saying, remember that, especially yeah. if you want to grow. Because yeah. you are describing downstream products coming from somewhere. You see, you people, you love to import. I'm talking about your own natural resources. Mm. You mm. go and give them to you, find them in your country. Mm -hmm upstream and you, you you drill for them you discover them you try and take them into come into commercial quantity and then you mm. you mean you do exactly what you want to do so what i'm saying is that all the stuff really starts upstream yeah okay even the ghanaian service companies i'm talking about as they, there's inactivity upstream there's very little work for them to do because they're all providing services to the upstream sector to the work that is happening up, upstream which means like when i'm going upstream sometimes they have we have about three producing fields jubilee 10 and then sankofa Giammi. Mm -hmm. so the reason i say that we could be doing a lot more is because listen jubilee 10 and sankofa Giammi have been there for a while no nothing new has, has, has come on and in this industry if you're not replacing the reserves Listen, in the end, you, if you're not growing, what happens? You die. Mm. So the important thing is for us to uh, build sufficient environment for investment upstream, mm -hmm. where there's activity. Because, you know, all along the coast, we have several basins. You know, Bernard, we are working in the western basin, mm -hmm. deep water. Yeah. There's the southern area, the central basin. Mm -hmm. There's eastern basin, Accra, yeah. There's Voltaean basin, which is on land, onshore. Everything mm -hmm. so far is offshore in the sea. Okay, so it's extremely, extremely important that we understand that's where it all begins. And it's gas also. You know, mm. Bernard, we get into all this talk and forget about the gas. Mm. And the gas is really what is providing the but energy. Now, before we get, why do we need a chamber to even advocate? I'm asking this because compared to mining, yeah. the mining is 
if you like, onshore. Yeah. So you have communities, they have issues. But if you look at the oil map, which yeah. I will put up yeah, shortly, yeah, it's offshore. a lot of this is not, yeah. nobody lives yeah, there. Yeah, but you see, you have assumed right away that mm -hmm. engagement has to be with communities. No. Yeah, so that, and so, yes, my, my, so the engagement what are you is with government also. Okay. It's trying to shape influence policy. Mm. It's trying to bring best practice. I see. After all, these are the companies mm. that are doing the work. Mm. Do you understand me? You mm. have invited in companies to come and explore. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? So what I'm saying is, the, and mm. they have skills and, 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 and they have technical capability mm. and they are across the world working. Okay. So we, we, we come together to share our experiences, to mm -hmm. have a common voice, mm. you know, and ensure that, you know, policy for industry is supportive of its growth. Walk me through this map. This is the the offshore map. So this is all our offshore yeah. Yeah. oil resources. That's it. That's it. That's production it. and potential. Yeah. Yes, but you see, go to the legend first to help. Yes. You see, green is production. So we're only producing the That's green. That's the key thing. Only the green. Wow. Very tiny. That's the so point the green is the you. 10, the Jubilee. Correct. There's also San Sankofa. Sankofa and Jinyame. Sankofa and Jinyame. Yes. That's ENI. ENI. And Jubilee and 10 is Cosmos and Talu. That's all. Good. So you basically just have yes. a tiny yes. portion yes. in the Western Enclave being produced. Absolutely. Which one is okay. the... So the, the next the, closest is under the, the green there, you see the, the, blue the turquoise. Is it blue? The turquoise. Blue. That's, turquoise. Yes. that's development. That's, you see, and it's, it's, that's a big piece there of acre. You see why it would have been, in 2019, would have been great if acre had come on stream. Because then the curve would have gone up. Because you had Jubilee and ten, then you had ENI. But then when it got to, to, to for Pekan to Acre, that was the, 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 the way it is. Yes, because, of course, COVID also hit at that time. Yeah. So look at that big bit there. That's Acre so special. The, the, the area which is turquoise yeah. is development. It development. Means that, yeah, it means that, remember that you start from the beginning. When you have a block, you do discoveries. When you find exploration, if you discover you are praised, if you are praised and it's commercially viable, then you are going to development. That means you're going to put it. Let's, let's take one. So you explore. Yeah. So which comes first? So you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you start off with, you have a block. Yes. Right? So yes. you start, you explore. You explore. Before that, even, I mean, you do a bit of 2D, 3D seismic. It's all part of exploration, okay? Mm -hmm. So you explore. Mm -hmm. When you explore and you find, mm -hmm. you have to appraise. To, to look at the quantities. Yes, and also and recovery then... rates. You have to appraise. You have to determine that it is for commercial. So you are moving from geology to yeah. accounting. Now business to commercial economics. side. Fantastic. Okay. So you explore, you yes. appraise. Yes. And then from appraiser, you go where? Development. So development comes next. Development then comes next. Okay. And that, by the way, is where local content is big. Because in the development are, side. In the development side. Okay. Because there you are, there are even, the, even the FPSO alone mm -hmm. was like five, six billion dollars. Okay. And in, in, in the last FPSO, I think about something in the region of a little under, under two billion dollars went to Ghanaian. That's why I said to you that it's not to Ghanaian. This were manufacturing parts that would be used on the FPSO. So that development is very critical. So mm -hmm. if you're not doing a lot of it, then the place is dormant. Mm. So, you know, it's dormant. So, and then so, after so, that, you go to production. So let's go back to that. So green is where you want to be. And green is very small because green is production. Yeah. You start from exploration, which is uh, purple. Look at it. So much exploration AGM is, going is doing exploration. Yes. Exxon is doing exploration. Exxon has left. ENI. Yeah. Uh, there's something called Britannia. Yeah. Media. Yeah. Sahara. Yeah. GMPC itself. Yeah. Yeah. First EMP. Yeah. Who are these people? What, what are these, these all, no, company these, names? No, these are, I mean, you mentioned some of the big ones, like Exxon has left. Yeah. AGM has just recently also given up its block. Uh, uh, ENI is, is one of the main... So this is ENI's no, exploration? Yeah, no, I'm saying even there also it has found. That's oh, not why so even that. here, yes, I'm saying you have to move it forward. But, but, but so for this as well, yes. yes. So there are two places for so ENI. Yes, okay. Good. And so, then, so, so, but GMPC is up there. So GMPC yeah, is also doing some exploration. Yes, they are. Is it? They are. But you see, is that why good for the industry? Get, it is. But the truth is that you have to make sure that you are getting somewhere. You can't be doing it forever. You know, you have to have the ability to find it because it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You just want to go and bring a rig 
you are paying a million dollars a day sometimes for 90 days just to come it's a lot of money so you've got to be sure what you're doing but that's I, why you don't use so so you notice money. that the exploration is a lot more so a lot of exploration yeah. happening yeah. more than uh, appraisal yeah. but i notice on the eastern side there's two here heritage yeah and are these are these for us as well yeah this no, is, no, so no, this is within our waters yes this is for that's us the Keta, uh, 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 Keta, uh, okay. heritage and then swiss africa yes i see which one is the yellow the the yellow is those that won bids there are blocks that have been won but i'm sure you heard that just three weeks ago the memorandum of understanding required those blocks so several of them mm -hmm. were cancelled so you know and and that's what's worrying sometimes when i say for industry because so much work has gone into that it's a shame when you do all that and you don't you don't you don't get on with it so that's what the yellow represents right. I, I feel like this is a good place to have yeah, a discussion yeah, so good. this is ghana yeah. uh, for those of you who are following the ghana Côte d'Ivoire situation mm -hmm. it, this is the pro all of this is for us right yeah, it's so within our, it's within within our waters because yeah. we, we come in here yeah uh, do you have any problem with the togolese or this is for us um, there's always you know when you're dealing with oil and and, and borders and you, the, people are always trying to find out what can be there so don't be too surprised but this line but is moment, the, so this is our, this our territorial yeah, waters our territory. right so and this is the only places that we are actually producing absolutely which is why the chart i will show later will show that we're sort of coming down yeah what are the chances that these guys will turn green anytime soon because you said to me that yeah. appraisal was the yeah. final stage yeah. before development yeah. yeah right yeah i mean so yeah. the, the the what are, what well, how well are we doing here because these guys yeah. are doing appraisal right yeah yeah they're doing appraisal but the industry requires over time that a lot of them have different areas where they work and you're looking for where you get the best possible uh, 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 returns meaning that where you think is more likely Mm -hmm. to, 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 more like to achieve something. Okay. Now, what has happened is that appraisal is involving also substantial money because you are, going, you are, you are sinking wells, mm -hmm. basically, to determine it. So the appraisal wells. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, I know that there are some of the companies who are even now struggling even to find rigs because of the whole disruption after COVID in the world, the state of the world, even to find rigs to rent. There's a queue to, to find rigs that you're going to bring into the the waters to begin to do the work you want to do so it's not so straightforward so even though you see so many like that i keep saying to you look how little there is and if you are not moving quickly then forever you're, okay. you're stuck let me bring another chart for your explanation the production chart i just wanted to show the graphic nature mm -hmm. of the decline in production so we started oil production in 2010 yeah. and 2011 was the year ghana grew yeah. this was ghana's golden year yeah where Ghana's economy grew by 14 percent because yeah. we really this is what they call first oil boom first oil and then what accounts for the spikes so you notice there's one main oh, spike here increasing production then you, then there's another spike here so this is production. so this will be 10. this is 10. you that see that big spike in 2016 yeah. that's why you have a big that, spike 10. that's what eni okay this, this is this is no that's sankofa gm I mean, it's not 10. so, so 10 so, is down here so with jubilee 10 is with jubilee yes then so you see is, the, then you see it dropping then because you get sankofa gm I mean, enter the free boom it goes up that's again. It. so you need that to happen then 2019 so you mean when we go here you need we had, it, pekan from acre pekan would have then 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 you see the continuing growth so this is the so this that's, is the now problem. you see that you are in decline because and, we, we, and, we, and we, we, we couldn't get pekan yeah, well because you haven't replaced your reserves pekan about that yes but you are not replacing your reserves fast enough and then the fields you have will plateau over a while you know you can't get the same amount you are getting from it and recovering recovery coming more and more because it's declining it has a lifespan it's not there forever mm. you see what i mean so you have to understand how that works and we are in 2023 yeah. would you say if i extended this chart to 2022 it's, it's come further down i mean the only reason I mean, in terms of production figures, there's no question. You have, you have been stuck in a certain amount of, what is it, 140, 150,000 barrels per day. You know, I mean, we really could be doing a lot more than that. But that's the situation at the moment. The thing that I have to say to you, though, is that Tolo, that's why I keep saying that those who are already here, you need to leverage and work with them instead of always looking for new ones. Tolo, for example, is the only one that is currently you know carrying out drilling programs and doing some more work so i think talo will help the numbers over the next 
few years. Mm. But it's only it's, it's established just working in an additional area from where it was. There's nothing new per se, mm. like a new company coming on. There's nothing better than that. Mm. Having you know a new discovery where they're going to add another hundred thousand ounces, then your revenues change. Mm. I'll tell you another chance before I bring Ben in. The percentage contributes to GDP. So this is production. Yeah. But then in terms of what it means for economy, there's a chart as gain, which is very similar to this mm -hmm. chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the, the chart I was talking about. Yeah. So the contribution of oil and gas to our GDP is also coming down. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, you see, that's, you see that's really what the trouble is. That's why if you, ha if you increase production, you have investment, and you are really, and you're speeding up the process from exploration the appraisal process remember that it, it sometimes it takes a bit long to complete that appraisal process so we need to try and improve that incentivize exploration a bit more okay so that people are actively doing it not it's not that they have blocks and they are doing a bit here and a bit there you see what i'm trying to say incentivize it a bit more so there's yeah. more the, the political you know, yeah. economist in me cannot help but look at the way this coincides with the political business So he goes up, he comes down. <laughs> I, know, I don't know how you managed to no, do that. No, I mean, so <laughs> you, you can put Mohammed's picture yeah. here. So he yeah, basically went up and came down. Yeah. Akufa also started very well, but he's also coming down. Yeah. I don't know who's going to come after him, but it looks yeah. like there's something that I don't know if you can explain. Yeah. Well, all I say to you is because that, also yeah. a lot of the oil companies yeah. as well, yeah. there's always a tussle about the local partner. Yeah. And somehow, yeah. I, I, I think I heard you or yeah. somebody interview yeah. Yeah. the first local partner who was brought in under the Kufu administration. Yeah. And he sort of complained about how you're treated by the NDC. Yeah. And I think we've seen that too. I don't know how that affects no, that is a problem. The, the sector. That, that is a problem. I mean, you, you have to understand that that's a problem. these are businesses that all they know how to do is do business and get on with it. You don't want to be spending your time walking the corridors of if you want to try to get things done in an endless process mm. of, you know what I mean. So that's part of having an investment climate that is working mm. you know people not everybody wants to go through hell to, to try to go to heaven you know I mean so, so that you have to understand that mm -hmm. and so if you don't put yourself in a place where there is interest because it's a predictable environment remember that also predictable it's a stable environment okay then you're not going to attract investment and when I say that what I mean is this Bernard let me give you a classic example if you come I come and rent your place you sign an agreement with me, you better than I. We've laid out the terms very clearly. I know my tenancy is for one year. Bernard, it's very difficult for me to be a happy man if you, the landlord, are going to turn up another month later, remind me that now they are doing this in this area, so I need to pay another 10 cities towards the road that's been done. Now they're doing so and so. Do you understand what I'm saying? These things affect the bottom line. Okay, so it's, it's a business culture that also needs to be improved. We need to understand that these are businesses mm. looking for returns and making, taking major risks. But there's also a view that taking major the, risks. The, the, the challenge yeah. with this yeah. risky investments, which I appreciate what you're saying, is that a lot of the countries that own the resource don't get that much. Do you know from, something? From the, whether it's you put the royalties or the taxes, the money looks a lot, but if you compare what we get to what the Nigerians get, to what the Angolans get, to what the Botswana people get from their, their yeah. diamonds, there's a strong view that in Ghana, our average return is below 20%, and in some countries as high as 50%. And they feel some of the agreements you sign are very bad. Sometimes politics goes into this. So, I mean, I know you're, you're representing big companies, but the, there's a strong view that the countries don't benefit. You know, it's very interesting. When I get to the last time I got interviewed on GBC, she said, you only get 10%. And I smiled. Mm. I said, let's just talk about it. Mm. So we are getting started. Mm. There's a barrel of oil. We're going to start to share it. Mm. Right? Now, before we do anything, okay, you, let's say anywhere between 7.5 and 15%, 12.5% will mm. come to you as royalty. Okay? Remember that government comes in many forms. 10% will go as equity. That's come as an equity holder. That's come the form for royalty. It's going to come back to you now Corporate as a tax. revenue authority and take 35%. Don't kid yourself. It is totally false. Mm. And we must learn this so that we know how to appreciate and work with others and mm. stop thinking always that people are cheating us. I am telling you today mm. that if you go and And these are several contractors who end up sharing mm. whatever it is. You know, I think if you look at the figures, and I should send you something, I think in the end, the country actually 
it is, there's a complete incentive to them because the country is a bit more than, than the, no. the, the Well, the figures, I, was, I could show you those figures when we come back. What I was referring to had to do with comparing tax, revenue, and royalty across many African countries. This yeah. work was done by the IF, uh, what do you call it, the IFS. Yeah. They, they did Nigeria, they did Botswana, they did yeah. Ghana, they did Angola. Yeah. And the average uh, percentage yeah. of the total production that you get back in taxes, yeah. Ghana was way lower than yeah, those you countries. Could, you could be doing so something. So that, that, that was, so it's, you, it's indisputable. So I'm it's saying not, you, could be, so you, could be, so you could be doing something wrong. Which is because what I'm saying is that some, yeah. the, the fact that somebody can ask for a bit more, more upfront yeah. doesn't mean you can. Which is what I'm going to ask Ben when we come back. I'm yeah. going to ask Ben Boachi yeah. from Africa yeah. Center for Finance Policy. Yeah. I think they are probably Ghana's leading energy think tank. Yeah. No doubt about that. They actually, they have been vindicated in, in, in a way because in the very controversial discussions around GMPC, Ben and Co said this was highly overvalued. They, did, they thought it didn't make sense. The GMPC was very strident in defending this. And it would appear as though Ben, Imani, and Co have been proved right. So I'll come back and talk to Ben. David is still here, giving us an overview of the sector from the perspective of the, the, the chamber. Stay with us. We'll be right back. so you can go further. Africana City is building bamboo bicycles to help children get to school. Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. The point of view tonight is looking at the upstream petroleum sector. Guest David Ampofu, CEO of the Upstream Chamber or the Ghana Upstream uh, Ch Chamber, and he is here to just give us a, and some insights into the sector. We've noticed two main problems: production is coming down. We needed a spike in 2019, but because a particular deal did not go through, that chart I showed you, Ghana's production volumes are coming down. Contribution of oil and gas to GDP is also reducing. Then there's also a view that Ghana doesn't get anywhere near enough rev resources. Production sharing doesn't seem working as well. Ben Boache is with Africa Center for Energy Policy. Ben, thanks for joining us. Let's, let's, let me start off with the, the point about the production decline. There's a chart we showed from 2019, things have turned south. What's going on with our production, Ben? Um, thanks for having me, uh, Bernard. And uh, let me send my regards to uh, David as well and, Hello. and your viewers. Hi, good morning. Yeah. Um, hi, David. Yeah, so I think David has, you know, 
done a good job, you know, explaining what is happening. Um, I mean, for oil production, a lot of things could happen. Uh, you have to monitor production even at plateau to ensure that you can stabilize the output for a longer period before the decline. Mm. Uh, what I've seen uh, in this space is that one, as David said, we are not replacing reserves. So if you were and bringing on additional producing fields, mm -hmm. um, if there's a problem with Jubilee or with Sankofa uh, project and that, you know, push decline down, uh, uh, push uh, production down, you would have new oil fields, uh, you know, coming on. So you hardly uh, see that kind of drop that we are seeing. And mm -hmm. from the graph that you showed, yeah. that is to say that between the uh, 2020 and 2022, mm -hmm. we have lost about 20 million barrels a mm. year. And that is huge mm. um, for a production output. Mm -hmm. uh, for Jubilee, we expected it, you know, to be declining at this point. Uh, there were some investment decisions that could have been fast-tracked or supported by government for them to uh, deliver on quicker uh, than they did to be able to stabilize production and also bring in other smaller discoveries around them to mm -hmm. uh, come to the point that we called uh, Greater Jubilee. We are still not uh, there yet, uh, you know. So that is pushing uh, the decline. Uh, for ENI, we know it's more gas uh, mm -hmm. than oil. So. Mm -hmm. Their plateau was expected to be quicker, mm -hmm. and then a decline. Beyond that, also, I mean, we have seen investment proposals from the companies to be able to ramp up uh, production and increase production. Decision making tends to be slow uh, on on these ones. Uh, David talked about um, you know Pekan, which has delayed. I mean, this is a 2014 discovery. Uh, Hess was supposed to bring it to production. The unexpected happened. We had to go to it loss, uh, and that freezed the development. After it lost, uh, they decided to sell uh, mm -hmm. and go. Uh, they sold it to Acker, and Acker came in promising to deliver that in a record time, mm -hmm. and even beyond that, aggressively explore mm -hmm. uh, the basins around it uh, to be able to produce more oil. So we're quite expectant. So if you track the budget, you track government statements. We're going to do uh, about 100, you know, thousand barrels a day more by 2021, and we are in 2023. Um, we didn't get that to happen, all right. So that expectation, which fed into our borrowings, our projections for the economy, will not materialize. So we don't have it. So, so then, Ben, have, if I press yeah. you to place your finger on the one reason why these production failures or this expected production not come on stream. Because of our economy, is it that they are, what, what is it, what, what is going on with Ghana and our production for which they decline? It's a mix of things, but I think we can drop it, uh, pinning down to regulatory failures. Regulatory um, failures. Where we're supposed, yes, where we're supposed to enforce uh, the law, we're not. And where the law has to be lax for action to happen, that is where you see muzzles, uh, you know, showing that there is a law. Uh, so we have failed to really uh, uh, read between the lines to see where we need to incentivize uh, companies to do more and where we have to strictly apply the law. Uh, and that is what has brought us uh, where we are. I mean, there are instances where people will carry their laws to their bathroom, I mean, to make sure that no line is missed when the oil production is dropping, uh, you know. And these are uh, 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 lessons for us to learn and yeah. how quickly we're able to do that will define the future uh, of the oil and gas industry. But at this point, it doesn't look good. Let's talk about the, the, the big one. You, you, you put out a very strange post on your social media, which I thought was like civic advocate save Ghana millions of dollars as Acres AGM relinquishes its 80% interest in the South Deepwater Tunnel block. And you seem to be gloating and you seem to be saying, we told you so. What is going on here? Can you just give me some quick background to this and why you and other members of society think that you have saved us so much money 
in this uh, reversal of a decision by AGM? Yeah, thank you. I think, you know, the work we do, we don't uh, wish to be justified or uh, to be prophetic like we are seeing uh, today. Uh, what we always try to do is to engage government, mm. try to support government to repair, uh, you know, some wrongs in agreements and decisions so that the country will be better for it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many things that we have not been able to save Ghana, mm -hmm. you know, because it got carried. So we're not actually gloating, but we're just saying that we've been lucky uh, for this not to have happened because advocacy prevailed and uh, the decision was not carried. I mean, we were clear in our minds that a discovery has to be appraised uh, to you know, establish the extent of the discovery and the depth of the discovery. That is the volume in place. And then you compare the volumes with available technology uh, to be able to extract it for a commercial decision to be made. All right. If you have not done that, you cannot place such huge number on it as the value of the asset. And GMPC and Acre Energy were able to put value, uh, I would say AGM, I mean their sister company, they were able to place about $700 million on a discovery that had not been appraised. And in fact, they have not even done the usual. I mean, when you make a discovery, you put out the pressure levels for us to know at least the producibility from that one well before you look at even drilling more wells around it to produce mm. the number of uh, barrels that you need for a day. You can check it. I mean, uh, Jubilee, OCTP, all the discoveries that they make, they will put out at least a pager to show that these are the pressure levels. This is what can be produced from that one well. So the last discovery that Ian and I made, for example, they were telling us we can do about 5,000 barrels a day from that one well. So that means that if they do about 10 wells around the discovery, multiply that, you know you are doing about 50,000 barrels a day from that discovery. So it's easier for you to then move on to even do the appraisal. So, so let, let me uh, make this easy for the viewers. You're saying that the uh, ACA had wanted to sell its interest in the pecan field to GMPC at $700 million, although there had been no appraisal. And you and other civil society people thought that this was, this was an outrageous price and that GMPC was being ripped off. But for some reason, or Ghana was being ripped off, but for some reason, GMPC wanted to go ahead with the deal. And by your advocacy... It triggers some legal things which scuttled the process. And therefore, you feel that if we had gone ahead and GMPC had paid that amount for the, uh, uh, for the, for the field, Ghana would have been ripped off. Is this basically the story? I just want to make it clear. Because there's a lot of technical yes, jargon I don't so, I want to avoid. So it was a composite transaction for two oil blocks, the uh -huh. AGM block and the Acre Energy block. Uh -huh. It is difficult to break it down into how much they were selling each to us because they put $1.3 dollars on the transaction uh -huh. but we know that the agm side of the uh, transaction they had put a value i mean the assessment they did was that the oil in place was worth 700 million dollars in value which they could sell to any investor so it was based on that value that gmpc did the negotiation plus the pecan field which they also placed about two billion dollars on it so two uh, 2.7 billion dollars negotiated to 1.3 billion uh, dollars composite but we had a challenge even with the 1.3 billion dollars because we had Ake came to Ghana bought you know the field for um, 100 million dollars and did two uh, more additional wells and suddenly they are quoting a value of two billion dollars we thought it was outrageous and that not much scientific data was available to justify that they could move that investment that they have done from hundred million dollars to two billion dollars. Okay. And the worst part was that the uh, AGM block, which had only one discovery, had not been appraised. You know, they just did their discovery, not much announcement, not much detail, and suddenly they are telling us it's worth seven hundred million, and they have negotiated it down yeah. with right. Pekan to take one point three billion. I just wanted to do something. I wanted so, to sh uh, hold on. I just wanted my people to show the map so they will see what we're talking about, and then I'll take a short break, and then we'll bring David in. So if you could put back the map, uh, and then I'll... So, yeah, so you're, you're making reference to this and this. Is it what we're talking about? 
these two yes so the, the, the okay. two of them yes, yes. so this is yes. what we're talking about it's not some complicated thing so yeah the spanner in the works was thrown in by CSUs and then I think Luke Coyle came in and said they were not going to allow this to go on is that how this thing got scuttled yeah so I mean we were trying to understand the whole transaction okay because you had Luke Coyle as a partner in it and then you have fuel trade uh, FT Ghana, which was also a partner in it, they had 2%, Luke Oil had 38%. So we're trying to understand, you know, what conversation government may have had uh, with Luke Oil and the other partners. So we started sending emails, trying to court attention of Luke Oil to see whether they knew about the transaction and what their views were. And even the structure that they were proposing, if Acker was selling, you know, to exit and hold only 10% interest, and uh, Luke Oil was going to have 38%. I mean, ordinarily, you will have to change your operatorship because in this business, skin in the game is very important. And Luke Oil, by all standards, is more experienced, much more resourced company than Acker Energy. So how does that become the operator when they had sold their interest uh, and left only 10%? So we wanted to understand from Luke Oil's perspective. And that's when we realized that they had not even been consulted in that whole arrangement. So then they have to write to the ministry to tell them that according to the uh, agreement that operates the block, there has to be a conversation on operatorship and because you cannot operate that block with only 10% uh, interest uh, right. uh, uh, in, in the block. So that is what really uh, mm. brought um, oil into the discussion. The, ben, stay with me. I'll come back to you. This is the point of view. To, tonight we're trying to break down Ghana's upstream petroleum sector, some running issues the latest being of course the agm relinquishing their interest in the south deep water tunnel the grandpa was here he's achieved chief executive of the chamber i'll take his reaction to this latest development whether i see this as positive or negative and i'll bring ben back as well on what we need to do to get production to go back up all within the next few minutes stay with us Pepsodent introduces charcoal and lemon essence. The unique combination of natural essences whitens teeth naturally for you and family because every smile matters. New Pepsodent Herbal. Introducing a unique combination of herbal extracts in an antibacterial toothpaste for strong teeth and healthy gums that protects your family and you. Every smile matters. gaming platform that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidated yeah! funds, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anyone can win. Flip it or own it. You go flip. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. Welcome back. Point of view tonight, we're looking at Ghana's upstream petroleum sector. Production is in decline. 
we need to ramp up production in a way that will bring back the glory days. 2011, 2012, David Ampoff is the CEO of the Ghana Petroleum Chamber, and he says, there's global competition, we need to make Ghana attractive, we need to do things to get this moving. Ben Wach is on the, on, the, on the show as well. What do you, what do you make of this? I mean, I, I don't know, from, from the upstream chamber perspective, mm -hmm. this development that Ben described, and this, I, I don't know, is it, what, what, what is it? I mean, look, first of all, let me just say to you that it just confirms what we are saying. Mm. And I'm not getting into the details, I'm just telling you that we are losing a company mm. that has been here for years, mm. that we signed a petroleum agreement with, mm. that has spent money here. Mm. You have also spent time, effort, all of that, mm. with the aim that at some point you will deliver more barrels of oil. And in the end, what is happening? Nothing. We are down to zero. Whether because they want to sell, whether because the truth is that the project is not happening. That's the point I want you to understand. Number two, mm. and throughout that period, and I don't, I, 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 those who have years, years been here, I never heard any of the companies on radio talk about tra that transaction. Every time I heard about that transaction, I was listening to GMPC. Let's be clear about that. Okay, so it's, we have to be careful when you structure the center and say that they did, they did that. Let's be very careful. I'm, I'm worried about that. I never heard them once, and I don't think anybody can say it. So, try and interpret that. All I want you to understand, which is important mm. for Ghanaians, is that we are not doing something right. Because we are not doing something right. But if there's money to be made, why are you, am I going to leave it and go away? Surely, there must be something really that's not working. In any case, I'll tell you the truth. I won't be surprised if it can be as basic as the fact that finding finance to, to develop the thing was tough. We know we forget that. I'm now telling you, I've been with a lot of times. You'll be very shocked that it probably would even boil down to the fact that mm. the, 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 the owner of the resource, something uh, the, the company, suddenly finds it difficult to find other companies to come along with additional money. Especially look at AGM. It's in very deep water. I think it's one of the deepest. Okay, and yeah. it requires substantial investment. Now, so even if they, as a company, could have gone further, wanted to get investment, I'm saying that the way we are conducting oil and gas in Ghana, it doesn't make it easy for them anyway to even attract a partner. So their plans will fall very quickly into water. But how are we conducting oil and gas in Ghana? Is it the regulatory issues? Oh, I mean, about? he said some, yeah. I mean, first of all, let me tell you something. He said something very interesting. I think we have to look at the regime very carefully. You know, we have two kinds of petroleum agreement regimes. What I mean is that Ghana has had a bit of difficulty. You know, Petroleum Commission and some of the institutions and everything came later. You, we had signed agreements with companies, as I'm saying, to conduct their affairs in a given way. And then later on, we put these things in place. Now, this is the argument for some of the government institutions that now we have come. So you have to, you know, listen to what we are saying about these new, these new provisions. You have some of the companies saying, no, 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 you can't do that. You, you can't do that. We have, we have agreed very clearly the terms under which we are going to work. If you've got some new plans, apply them to the new guys. After all, that's been happening anyway. I mean, the kind of royalties that people are paying is much more than Kazu and Talo at the beginning because they were de-risking the field. That's how they came. You give them a sweet deal so that they would come and deliver and put their money behind. They help you. You found oil. So now we forget how long we're looking for oil in this country. We spend all our money buying crude for power plants. By the way, Bernard, the, 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 don't lose sight of the gas. Every time I get into a discussion, I always say that. Don't lose sight of the gas. There's a billion dollars of gas that we could have been buying for power plants that we don't have to pay for now because we are producing gas. E I is generating gas, certain amount of gas. So all I'm trying to say to you is that if you ask me what I think of a particular transaction, the wife, I say to you, for me, it's a sign of failure across board. We should be moving on. These companies who have been here, if they are in exploration, by now it should be in appraisal, it should be, we should not be shutting down to go. Yeah. Exxon. Exxon has Blue left. chip, it left. You have to ask yourself, nobody talks about that. I mean, maybe, so, maybe, I mean, I don't want to speculate, but if, if, Darko, if they're the leaving, the yes. could it be that maybe the deal they were offering was so bad and based on advocacy that people like Ben have done, or be, well, based on insistence by the regulator I, 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 that the right thing be done, they leave. I, I, I don't think because that, don't forget there's also a mindset but, that Africa is a, 
a, a, a, a green field to be milked is a high yeah. return, well, high be, risk yeah, place. Be, be careful. So a lot of companies come, yeah. and if they don't have their way, then they sort of just leave. You know something? Because the resource belongs to us, by the way. I, I, I think Ben, I think I think Ben and Co do a good job. I don't think they're doing anything that puts companies off. I think the companies even recognize them as useful to them. Get that straight. But those theaters are not companies are not opposed to them. They actually like them. Sometimes think about your own government, your own policy environment, and stop always trying to put it on somebody else. Okay? I don't. I mean, the approach that everybody is out to cheat you. We need to be very careful with that. That doesn't help us. And I think that's part of our problem. Mm -hmm. If you have, and you know something, I ex I learned that I recognized that very quickly when I took on this job. I was amazed. There's such the mistrust. It's, mm. it's, it's scary. I mean, you should, mm. hear, you should hear people talk about businesses. It's like, they're just like, you said, they're here to rip us off. Mm. You know something? Don't invite them if you think they're going to rip you off. Don't, there's no company right. that's working here because they came and imposed I'll, themselves. I want to do the gas thing, but let me bring Ben on a quick thing. Ben, in your release on this uh, ASEP AGM ACA thing, you came up with three recommendations, which I wanted you to elaborate on quickly, that the president should immediately commission an inquiry into the ECA AGM transaction and you give three reasons for that. Can you just sort of touch on that quickly before we talk about the gas situation, Ben? Uh, yes, Ben, I, I think we, our position is that we cannot, you know, sweep this under the carpet. We have to learn from it. And the way to learn from it is for us to independently assess what has happened uh, over the period, whether the agencies of state, you know, duly represented our interest or it was, you know, something that went wrong, for which reason they wouldn't even listen to any advice from any quarters. So those are the positions that we are making for us to learn because we've seen the behavior of Acker and AGM uh, uh, in this space. And that brings me to the bigger conversation that you were having with, uh, uh, you know, David a short while ago. I mean, we are not against any company and we are not emotional about state participation and state interest and uh, you know discount risk to assume that companies are always cheating uh, Ghana. It's an entirely a different conversation. There's a specific transaction that we saw the behavior of a company to be odd, and they were in in cahoots, with, if you want to say, with some state institutions to really undermine the interest of the state. And that is why we're singling them out. But we have seen in many instances that it was the state's uh, uh, inability to regulate the sector well. That is why Exxon, for example, left. Uh, that is why we have seen all the majors leaving. Even today, um, uh, Luke Oil is also leaving. And they are seeking to sell their, their interest in the PECAN to a minor, an Indian company. So all of them are leaving, and we have to look back and see how we better regulate uh, the space. I have been telling government, I mean, when uh, uh, E&I made discovery on the Block 4, they were seeking to do a fast track development to bring a tidal back into the OCTP to produce that oil uh, for us. They did that. They made a discovery in 2021. Mm. Three months subsequent to that, the same company E and I made a discovery in Ivory Coast next door. Ivory Coast approved the plan of development, and they are going to produce the oil this quarter. All right. Wow. We took a year to even sanction the appraiser. So. That kind of regulatory environment mm. wouldn't make you produce more oil. And we also don't have to forget, when we are talking about national interest, the oil is for us, it, it's, it's really uh, uh, squeezes the bigger conversation about risk, you know, the investor's appetite. Somebody mm. sinks a well for $60 million, mm -hmm. and suddenly we think that ownership of the resource is more important than... Yeah the uh, 60 million dollars that is going into sinking a well not knowing what will come up and in the oil uh, you know industry you have to sink the well to determine whether you can produce it or not so there is investment and there is ownership and we have to create a very delicate balance to ensure that we are not just talking uh, ownership and ignore the money and the investment and technology that is required to actually bring the oil out of the ground which then makes it a, a valuable resource and that is what you see, many analysts that are going around thinking that Ghana could make better. And I've seen some of them that just picks, you know, uh, the fiscal regime somewhere and compare with actual revenue in Ghana. That's not how you do analysis. If you are comparing fiscal regime, you compare the fiscal regime and you see that Ghana is much better than many of the countries that you see in some of those write-ups. All right. And if you even compare revenue, you see that Ghana is still much let's, better let's talk about than gas. some of the companies David, that we David. actually comparing with. Thank, thank you. Let's talk about gas. David, you mentioned that gas was one of the 
almost like the unexpected benefits that we are getting. A few years ago, we were flaring gas, re-injecting. Now, gas is working. But there's a challenge. Ghana Gas owes GMPC quite a bit of money. I mean, what's your understanding of that particular situation? Because, as you said, the power sector has benefited immensely and could be transformed just by this gas, which, for some reason, uh, we are getting. But I don't know what your, your, your understanding is of the arrangement between the... And, Ben, I'll come to you on this as well. Between the gas company and the GMPC and the debt and the PIAC report, there's a whole messy I mean, yeah, well, situation yeah, there. Well, I don't well, know. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you say it. I mean, it's policy, pricing. Just get it right. It's, it's, not, mm. it's not rocket science. You're not the only people doing this. We don't know how to do it. Let's go and look at somebody, what somebody else is doing and, and, and learn it. Mm. All I'm seeing is that you have in this place, I don't know what that is about. Is it, is it 1.5 trillion cubic, standard cubic feet of gas offshore? You have substantial reserves of natural gas. This natural gas, that's what we are calling these days the transition fuel. Even as we try and move away from fossil fuel, oil and gas are bad for the environment, climate issues, the gas has come to be understood as the least harmful. Yes. And we understand we can use it for a while. And, you know, I, I look at it today, the gas, and we still have people, women, you know, I mean, Charcoal, charcoal I mean, cutting down how? trees. When you okay, have gas, gas that and, you and, should and, be and using and to produce food. And 50% of the LPG that we have here comes from here. It should be 100%. It should be at a price that we can afford. Because what, what you know, but the pricing issues, policy issues, you've got to do the things that make you realize your dreams. Gas is critical. That's all I'm saying. Mm. And you know something? Again, the chairman had a make a make a huge case for which years ago about domestic gas because here we were there were issues about importing gas. Yes. And if you remember, yes, I think Nigeria, we probably the even, we probably even got a, a, a private elephant city in Temana. It's a gas regasification plant. So many dollars. It's sitting there now. We're going to import gas. We say, what are we importing gas for? We have enough domestic gas. So the, the gas. industry said they could produce the gas. How many of your twenty-two uh, companies are gas focused? The gas is from Sankofa, GM, e and I. Don't mess with it. Mm. That's why I keep saying, even with ENI, we have to know how we handle them. Yeah. They produce the, and they deliver. They deliver the gas optimum. They produce the gas. Mm. So, so don't, don't let's, I mean, it's the biggest, 50% of the gas comes from there. There's some gas comes from, by the way, don't forget, we got free gas also from Jubilee. They called it foundation gas. When you found the oil, the gas was associated gas. Okay, we got that free from the almost $200 million worth of that. Okay, so you have almost a little under a billion dollars worth of gas saving because of domestic gas. We need to harness our domestic gas. So what do we need? Right now, we need to put in place the right infrastructure to evacuate it. Because you see, when you have gas thousands of feet down there somewhere, you need to put in pipelines to yeah. bring it to shore yeah. and all of that. So we should be, we should be investing in, in, in but, gas. But let me take your comment on gas, yes. particularly yes. because Ukraine-Russia war, the sanctions against Russia... Europe is hungry for gas. France took many ministers to Algeria looking for a lot of gas. And here we are with gas reserves and our gas companies in debt. What are your thoughts around gas and what we should be doing as we wrap up the show? Um, yes, I think it's enough uh, <laughs> for us to build it down. Uh, but a lot has gone wrong um, with gas policy uh, in our country, right from the decision to do it ourselves as yeah. a country, yeah. fed it into a power sector that never recovers the revenue. Uh, so it's all generating debt. But I think at all times, when we're looking at state interest versus the private sector, what we have to define is what is, does the state want? Mm -hmm. If the states want, for example, 50 percent, all that we have to ensure is that whether the private sector delivers it or a state enterprise delivers it, that 50 percent is never missing for a state company to deliver it and we don't find the money it's even much more problematic all right so that is where we are now we're flaring some of the gas um, in three years we fled more than 300 million dollars worth of gas so the gas that was given to us for free has been fled instead of commercializing it or we, we just burnt it we just bent, yes we wow. bent or released it into the atmosphere and causing other problems with it um, you talked about Russia, Ukraine war. Now gas is sold to Europe around $35 yeah. per MMBTU. Yeah. If we have solutions and policy orientation to mean? even quickly take advantage of that, we could have converted some of the gas yeah. even to LNG. Yeah. Solutions are available today yeah. to be able to export. Yeah. Some gas have been discovered. ENI Block 4 has gas, the Akuma gas. Nobody's talking to them about what they do with that gas within the quickest possible time. So almost three years, the discovery 
is sitting there. Nothing has happened to it. So that is why I talk about policy and who is engineering the policy to support incentive. Mm -hmm. When we say incentive, it's not only giving them fiscal incentive to say, oh, we are giving you a reduction on royalty, but the kind of conversation you are having with industry and engaging them to be able to do what is right mm. at every part, at point yeah. in time. It's also an incentive, making them feel at home yeah. to take the right decisions and put in the money. Uh, it's also an incentive, right? And that is what we are failing to do. Mm. As we speak, we are in court with ENI, we are in court with Talo. So your producers, we are in court with them. Who want to bring in money to come and produce oil or gas in Ghana? You know, and these are problems that could be resolved. Some of them can be resolved using technology. Some of them, you really have to sit and talk you know, I keep saying that when uh, Maradona's uh, uh, handball was accepted, uh, you know, even after the match, and we still kept the results, it's not because FIFA couldn't reorganize uh, uh, the match or they couldn't uh, uh, do another walk. But you also have to think about the implication of, re you know, uh, organizing and doing everything afresh to take the common sense decision and say, okay, let's move on and learn from it. And then let's so, come up with policies that will prevent that in the future. Absolutely, yes. in the future. Yeah. So, there are yeah. things that you can learn from. Yeah. And not just all the whole industry. To run to run. It's almost like it's so sad, yet there's a bit of hope. You are there at the chamber, yeah. right? So what are you going to do Look, I mean, for I, us? And, and you said it very well. We really mm. have to work together. Mm -hmm. I always have, when I have the opportunity, urge government mm. to see industry as a partner. Okay. We are in this together. I mean, if you don't sit and talk, nothing will work. You just said it. If you've got your two main operators and you are in court with them, and you're asking, going around road shows, there must be 17 or 18 or 19, we don't know how many years, nine, to bring people into this country. Okay. And, and those that are here, you're having challenges with, they won't come. Yeah. Okay, so let's be clear. And, and they put it very well. Oh, you see, it's not just the fiscal regime. It's how you do things. It's not everybody wants to spend all their time one get, trying to get one small thing done, taking forever. It's very frustrating. Mm. It needs to be seamless, smooth, the whole business environment. You know, cutting edge. We must have people, the quality of decisions must be good. Right. And you will only get good quality decisions when you have people who are conversant with the, the subject making those decisions. Wonderful. Thank you, David Lampofu, Ghana Industry Upstream Petroleum Chamber CEO. Great to have you. Congratulations. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Thank ben Boachi, Africa Center for Energy Policy. Fantastic think tank. Great advocacy. Ben, thanks for joining us. That's all we have time for for tonight's edition of the show. Stay with CTTV. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye.